Hey there YouTube, this is SGM4306. This is a very long overdue video. So as you guys know, I'm really into mini disc recorders and especially the Sonys are so cool. And I don't know, it's just one of my obsessions. Anyway, um, I actually received a comment in one of my videos. I think I noted that um, I was having trouble with this, um, this player in particular. This is a nice kind of higher end one. It's the uh, R900. And I notice that whenever I'm playing a disc, um, it'll it'll skip quite a bit if it's on um, upright. If I turn it upside down, it'll play just fine. That's pretty much a sign that the um, the floating lens mechanism is starting to go. So basically, um, you need to replace the laser, unfortunately, even though it's um, pretty much just the uh, the lens mechanism. The laser diode itself is just fine. This will. Uh, play it'll start up if you put it upside down it'll start up any disc pretty quickly which kind of stinks that um, you can't just replace the lens and the uh, electromagnet for it but anyway so I'd um, mentioned that and um, my friend uh, Guntis hopefully I'm pronouncing his name correctly had messaged me and said um, I actually have a spare lens would you would you want one to do a video on to replace it and that's actually really um, interesting because I thought that, you know, any spares, this device is well over 10, yeah, more than 10 years old. This is probably like 15 to 20 closer to, um, I believe this came out maybe late nineties, early 2000s, something like that. So I'd figured I'd never be able to find a replacement part, but, uh, apparently he has, um, replacement parts for them, which is amazing. And he, uh, offered to send them over to me. And unfortunately, you could see it. He sent it um, last November, and it's been almost a year. <laughs> and I kind of forgot about this. And I um, I found this, and I actually wanted to listen to this again. So perfect time to uh, crack this open. And you can see, um, yeah, you can see he's over in Latvia, and um, this is just marked as electronic spares. And he sent me something really cool in addition. And he's made me a mixed disc, which is really awesome. This is basically um, like 90s and early 2000s, like late 90s, early 2000s music. And that's really cool. That's one of the things I love about mini disc. Um, just go through really quick and see what's on here. Busy, wait a moment. There you go, Beck, Red Hot Chili Peppers, uh, Coolio, Tupac, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And just a ton of like what I would consider kind of uh, music from my uh, my childhood slash teen years. <laughs> so yeah, it's a uh, really cool. Um, I've already uh, given this a quick listen, and it's really nostalgic for me. So thank you so much for that. There is a letter, which um, we'll go through real quick. It's a, it's a short one. So he says. Uh, so he says, I uh, hope the replacement laser uh, works well. Um, yeah, and bonus disc from the 90s. Really cool. I love that. <laughs> that just put a big smile on my face when I uh, when I listened to that. Anyway, um, we have the laser right here, and it's very well packed um, with this uh, captain tape, basically. And there we go. So I guess this is how they um, they shipped back in the day. I've never actually seen just a uh, a spare non-used uh, mini disc laser. It says optical pickups. Um, I guess Blue Jones is a company that uh, makes them. Anyway, um, they're just in here in a bit of um, static dissipative uh, baggy. Um, because these lasers are actually static sensitive, uh, usually um, there's a part part on the ribbon right here, that silver part. So yeah, usually this little um, solder point, it's uh, two pads would be soldered um, to short out the laser so that if you accidentally did shock it, it would go through the short instead of blowing out the laser. Um, but as long as we're careful with this, this should be fine. Uh, so it comes with the... Um, just a laser sled pretty much and the ribbon and um, the overwrite head will have to take off of the old lasers. So uh, let's actually just get into this. Um, this is going to be fairly simple to take apart. So it's pretty much 
uh, two screws on the top, two screws on the bottom. This uh, back part will actually swing out, uh, but we will need to um, lift up one of these little metal parts that's uh, latching the door on. Remove that, push the door inwards, and um, then we can take off two screws on the front, two screws on the other side of the front, and um, you know undo the um, the latch for the ribbon for the front. Uh, PCB with the screen and then we can take that all apart. So I'm going to speed through this um, This is pretty easy to do. But anyway, let's just get into it Okay, there we are I believe I've actually shown how to open this up and I've shown the laser and whatnot before in a previous video uh, But now this time um, we're actually gonna have to get into the mechanism itself Luckily, the um, the head there is some glue to keep it a um, a line. There is a screw we can actually take that off. It looks like um, the bracket that um, goes from the laser underneath to the actual overwrite head it keeps them aligned so that they both move at the same time. Um, we're gonna have to unscrew that from the old one and screw it onto the old one or the new one rather. Sorry. So yeah, um, we are going to actually need to get down to the board. So we're going to need to take out all the screws on here, uh, undo the ribbon cables, and then swing this out just enough to get access to the, uh, the mechanism that's sitting under here. Okay, so now we have enough of it off. We can start pulling it away. Now the overwrite head... I'm going to try to do this without desoldering it. Um, but we can get the laser off. It's just as if you have to pull the locking bar upwards slightly, and then you can pull the laser out. Keep in mind, you really shouldn't be doing this all by hand, um, especially not on a rug. But I've done this a lot of times. I've never had an issue. But just, as always, be careful with ESD for electronics and whatnot. Anyway, we have um, access to everything now, finally. So, um, let's see, we are going to need to undo these two screws, it looks like, to free the uh, overwrite head. Okay. And the head now is free. You can kind of see um, it's just floating there now. Now, um, we need to figure out how to actually get the laser out. It looks like we're going to have to actually go pretty deep into the mechanism. There is a single screw here that holds a um, metal finger that presses down on this bar, which is the worm screw that moves the laser up and down. If we loosen that and get this bar to swing out, we should be able to pull the laser um, all the way out, pull the bar forward, and uh, free that laser. Okay, so yeah, to safely do this, you do need to actually remove uh, this cog here, just the top one. There's a split wing, uh, split ring washer on there that you had to remove, and you can just carefully lift this off, and the entire laser comes with the uh, the lead screw. So I'm just going to carefully uh, remove the worm screw, and here's the old laser module there. Okay, yeah, so you can see the old lens, um, the actual lens floats, and you shouldn't, you really shouldn't do this on a uh, good lens, but you can see mine, um, the actual springiness of it is probably not so great, and that's why I'm having trouble um, with skipping and reading discs and whatnot. Anyway, just going to set this one aside carefully get the new one the new one looks about the same hard to tell <laughs> but yeah um anyway this is just going to go right back into the mechanism now this is going to be a little bit tricky so i guess um what we shall do is get the old the worm screw start threading it through and it should just Gonna go and put it about halfway. Uh, the bearing is just sort of floating, and that has to fit into the mechanism, which 
goes here. So we want to put the fingers on the, um, the rail on the other side. Sort of get this situated. Push this. It's going to take quite a bit of uh, finagling, I guess. There we go. You want to get the pin in on the other side. Start pushing it. Get the bearing lined up. It has to go into the metal. There we go. It just slotted right in. And um, this is pushed all the way in. Now there's an end piece with like kind of a springy bit that's supposed to push on the end of the axle. Here, I'm going to have to do this off camera. I can't do this with like one hand. <laughs> Give me a sec. Okay, so I screwed that back in. It's pressing down on the bearing. And the end, the little spring finger, is pushing the entire rod inward so it's seated correctly. And if I were to spin this, you would see the laser actually going towards the left there. So it's seated properly. So now we can grab the uh, gear that we removed, this guy, just gently put on the axle. Give it a few uh, rotations to make sure it's seated correctly. And then we have the absolutely tiny, you can barely see that blue thing on my finger. That has to go on there, so I'm going to do that off camera so I don't ping it off and lose it. Okay, now it's a matter of realigning the overwrite head again. There's a um, an alignment hole there, and then just the two screws pop right on. The alignment isn't critical, um, but it does have to be kind of um, directly over the laser, otherwise it won't write correctly. Um, but yeah, let me uh, futz around with this a bit. Okay, looks like the um, overwrite head is aligned correctly. It's uh, directly over the laser there. So now it's just a matter of um, refitting the two ribbons, so the one for the... Um, actual laser itself might actually help to push the laser all the way into the center so that you get more leverage on the ribbon and then the second one you have to thread it through the uh, PCB okay basically I had to use tweezers to to grab it through and pull it through very carefully because you can easily damage the, um, the ribbon or the, the pins on there okay so now it's just a matter of screwing all of this together so just going to go through this real quick and uh, we'll give it a quick test before I actually put the shell on though I just want to get a few of these screws in so it doesn't open up and fall apart while it's on one thing I uh, forgot to note because this is a brand new laser um, it will be necessary to relubricate the rails with uh, a little bit of white lithium grease or something similar that won't um, damage anything because these are metal and metal contacts just make sure you get a little bit in there okay so let's do a uh, quick test back's not on but um let's see if it loads up skip through the tracks still a little bit of a squeak going on so maybe i need to lubricate this a little bit more you can see the um the laser sled motor going and there you go it's playing there you go so let's shut this off okay so yeah um lubrication is actually really important so um basically i mean other than me sticking the back on you do have to be careful where these little fingers are for where the uh, switch locations are, otherwise you can break them off. Other than that, though, um, this has been how to um, swap out the laser and um, reattach the overwrite head and whatnot. So if you have a mini disc um, recorder and you happen to be able to get a spare laser, or maybe from another uh, mini disc player with like a broken screen, you can actually swap out the lasers um, without too much trouble. Uh, just remember to lubricate the rails really well, otherwise you'll have trouble um, playing um, when you reassemble it because there's too much friction. 
anyway, uh, hopefully you guys found this interesting. I'm going to button this back up and then probably give this like a couple hours of, uh, of playback in order to make sure that there's absolutely no problems. But seeing as this has a brand new laser, hopefully I'll get another um, few decades out of this. Anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.